Uh, we're here at the Internet and Politics Conference at uh, the Berkman Center for Internet Society at Harvard University. And I'm here with Andrew Roche uh, from the Personal Democracy Forum. I hope I got that right. And um, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, uh, there's a lot of discussion about what the role of the Internet will be um, in the administration since it seemed to play such a major role in the election. And, and what do you think? What do you, what, what do you think really uh, exists beyond all the hype and the press releases? Well, you know, political opinion in our society gets formed by people talking to each other. And they do it in the most traditional places, uh, around a dining table, around a water cooler, over the back fence, in the market, and people share their aspirations, their hopes, their dreams. And a lot of those conversations happen, you know, that way in 2008, the same way they have for decades. But now because of the internet, those conversations are in effect on steroids. My 82-year-old dad, who doesn't know how to do more than one email address at a time, was emailing his 50 friends Barack Obama YouTube videos during the election. And so, you know, in a normal, you know, without the internet, my dad would have spent a year and a half or two years waiting for a social situation where he might have met those same 50 friends and he would have had something to say about the political situation or his belief that Barack Obama would be the best candidate. And now, he's able to do it instantly in one afternoon, even if it's just one adri email address at a time. Now, you know, if you think about all the people who know how to do more than one email address at a time or are making those video YouTube videos, you know, m my dad's become a 21st century political pamphleteer, but there are hundreds of thousands of other 21st century political pamphleteers that are using these tools, not only to help elect someone, but also to let their opinions be known about all kinds of things. So it, there's no doubt that it's going to have an effect on governance, not just how we elect someone, but how we actually solve problems. And then ultimately, some of these people are going to use these tools to solve problems themselves that the government hasn't solved for us, and therefore actually competing with government. You, you, you can imagine, for example, um, you know, people taking pictures of potholes and posting them on a Google map, or uh, people d developing ways in which to find out when the subway or bus is going to arrive. These are things that traditionally government would be doing for the public. People are figuring out how to do this themselves with these tools. So we're seeing a new network public sphere where it's not really just about electing people, it's about actually a new kind of governance where people solve problems because they need to be solved and they're using these tools to empower themselves to connect with like-minded other uh, citizens around the same issues and that's the thing that's so exciting. So this is almost a vision of a new type of government in a way. Is that, is that accurate? Is it yeah, a new type of governance. You know, I mean, if you think about it, you know, you don't need a law passed to uh, make sure, you know, people t already turn off their cell phones when they walk into a movie theater and there's already sort of a collective social governance around the fact that you turn off your cell phone and you walk into a theater. You didn't need a law to be passed because people figured it out. And people are going to start figuring out other ways in which to just sort of decide on things without actually having to pass a law because there's a certain social norm about it that gets established through people talking to each other. It's just cooler to you know, decide, let's all do this because it's, good, it's the bet betterment of society. There's a tendency to think that government can solve all our problems and government is still stuck in the 20th century. Even though we've elected Barack Obama in the 21st century, he's not going to be able to drag the entire federal bureaucracy into the 21st century in just four years. But these tools keep evolving and are evolving very quickly. Twitter wasn't here two years ago. YouTube wasn't here three years ago. Facebook and MySpace weren't here three years ago. Who knows what kind of tools will be here four years, five years, eight years from now. So we're talking about even more powerful tools, more powerful people who know how to use the tools. And if government doesn't catch up, people are going to try to solve the problems themselves. That's a it's a it's a idealistic uh, scenario, and I'm am wondering what the uh, flip side of that might be. I mean, how could uh, how could we get it wrong? Well, the you know we always worry that government um, could turn itself into Big Brother because it's watching us, it's keeping track of all our cell phone calls, our easy pass through the toll toll booths, uh, um, all our emails are traceable, or our text messages are traceable. But if you really think about it. Um, we all have these cameras, we all have these ability, all, all these tools to also watch the government. So I actually think that there is a big brother, it's maybe called little brother, and it's us. And that, it's the, that there will be a balance created between the bad stuff and the good stuff because the tools of collaboration, the tools of organizing, um, allow people to hold their government accountable 
when the government starts to behave in ways that don't benefit the whole. And that has to do with transparency, it has to do with campaign finance reform, it has to do with um, uh, you know, all kinds of cronyism and sort of top-down political deals that used to occur in the 20th century, but now are going to be challenged by new ways of actually connecting. So not just the people who have access get to make the decisions, but maybe the people who know the most about a particular subject get to make make the decision. So I actually don't see a downside. You know, people talk about, you know, uh, rumors about Barack Obama being a Muslim distributed on, on the internet, and that's bad. Well, it's the same as, you know, when, we used to, when I was going to school, when people would say, don't believe everything you read. It's the same applies today. I mean, if you asked Americans whether the Earth revolves around the Sun or the Sun revolves around the Earth, 18% of Americans think that the Sun revolves around the Earth. I mean, we have an education problem in our country because education's been choked financially for decades, and education's a pillar of democracy. So we only think about these tools in relation to the kind of educated citizenry we have today. But we may have a more educated citizenry in 10 or 20 years because there's so many more resources and so many more opportunities for learning moments that don't just happen in classrooms, but just happen because of a network world. And so maybe we'll have a society that can actually identify the truth faster than it could before. And so that's why I'm optimistic. And I don't really see a downside. So instead of, instead of maybe uh, uh, the, the technology catching up with the people, we've got to get the people to catch up with the technology now in a way. Well, and there are some people who will never catch up with the technology because some baby boomers who got successful and happy uh, you know, with their jobs and their position in life in the 20th century aren't going to adapt to this new technology. And there are new entrepreneurial uh, energies, uh, social entrepreneurs who are thinking about uh, using their, uh, their skills and these tools to create new kinds of value systems that aren't necessarily related to money or position, but are, in ter but are valued in terms of the, uh, how, how many more people can be uh, positively affected by um, a set of decisions or um, a, a, an ability to connect with other people. And you're going to actually, the big opportunity here is where you start seeing citizens from different countries connecting with each other, um, doing diplomacy without their government's intervention. Because you could find people in two different countries that you would otherwise, the governments are opposed to each other, but the people in the both countries actually agree on the same thing. And they could both be lobbying individually to try to get their governments to agree to what they see. Taking the role of the government out of the, out of the equation. Uh, anarchy, in a way, uh, empowered by the internet. Empowered by the internet. So we tend to think about technology in relation to our own governance and our own democracy, but this technology is, is going to change the entire world. I mean, 5.5 billion people are going to have cell phones by the year 2010. That's 75 percent of all the people in the world. There are going to be many millions of people, if not a billion people, who are going to have cell phones before they have clean water or access to enough food. If you extrapolate that to, let's say, 2015, maybe 80, 90 percent of all the people on the planet will have cell phones. It's unprecedented that every single human being on the planet would be connected to every other human being on the planet. And the phones that they're going to have in 2015 are going to make the iPod of today look like a Motorola brick from 15 years ago. So we're seeing this advance further and further, and we're just at the very beginning. You know, we, the, the good news about the Barack Obama campaign is not just that he won, but that now the entire political establishment realizes that the internet is here to stay. It's not just a, a little uh, you know, uh, flare-up that uh, got Howard Dean some money or that uh, unseated um, George Allen with the Macaca moment on YouTube in 2006 or uh, got the nomination for Connecticut to Ned Lamont and every single example showed that you know, it didn't really elect anybody. Well, it's now understood that the internet is essential to electing someone. But that's just the beginning. It's, you know, uh, I always use this analogy. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone because he wanted to uh, distribute music. He didn't know that he was actually creating an entirely new communication tool called the telephone, as, as, as we know it today. Um, but when he, was, when he first used it, the first thing he said to, to Watson was, Watson, are you there? Can you hear me? We're at the exact same point in the use of the Internet in understanding what its implications are. Uh, we're just at the very beginning.
Well, I look forward to interviewing you again in, uh, in another 10, 20 years when, when uh, we can foresee another 10 and 20 years down the road. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time. And uh, I, I want to plug your website real quick. It's, uh, so it's personaldemocracy.com. And Personal the site is called techpresident.com. Techpresident.com. Okay, well, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thanks very much.